the Underdog Podcast. It's your host, T. Lee, and my co-host, Jack Cowden, will be live today, as usual. Was pulling up the acting like they couldn't see me. Now she want to clean me up like a squeegee. I told her that's on me, baby, like yellow BZ. With a peanut butter tear like a Reese. He's going to first reveal to all the obstacles. Get it done. That's the underdog. They don't forget the underdog when they see me. I hit them with the John Cena, they can't see me. You may overlook this person, but the underdog is the one who's going to put in the word. It's over, you know? Because you have to lose to win, whether you think losing is a uh, big event. Out of mind. All I'm saying, just be careful who you idolize. I'm kicking this scripture just before the bang. Ain't no cap in my words, I go against the grain. So I always believe in life. I took so many risks to make the same happen. You know what I mean? I'm always working, bro. Like, uh, I just, like I said, I'm energy driven. The underdog can put you on your ass. The underdog can put you on game. The underdog can show you something that you didn't know. You can't go down. All you can do is go up. So are you going to stay where you at or are you going to move up? You hear the bangers. You the bangers. <laughs> Yo, yo, what it do, good people? Welcome to the Underdogs Podcast. We're back at it again, you feel me? Season four, episode 14. This is Hillaby Hill featuring Dolomite Alabama's own master portraitist, muralist, and visual artist, A. Nichelle, a multi, multinational enterprises that creates art pieces through artistic craftsmanship. Femme, we definitely got a uh, special episode coming today. You know, she believes that if one can capture the eyes, they have an opportunity to capture the minds. And if you capture the mind, art energy has a genuine chance to invoke pure emotion. You did what I'm saying? So we're going to go in and bring in right now. You got the red carpet laid out for you, Queen. What's going on? Hi, how you doing? You doing all right over here, you know. Um, like I say, we, we definitely appreciate you, you know, giving your time to the Underdog platform, you know, so we can lay the red carpet out as you deserve. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, Thanks so, for having me. I appreciate you. Most definitely. It's an honor. Like I say, um, from Future Dead Artist Gallery to, you know, where we at now today, you know, so definitely a pleasure to have you on here. Um, Thank you, Thank you for having me. So first off, you know, as we're halfway through 20 or 2023, what's something that you learned in 2022 that helped you prepare for this year? Um, what have I learned? <laughs> okay. So, um, the biggest thing I learned, I moved this year. So I moved from Dolomite, Alabama, all the way to Georgia. Okay. And the biggest thing I learned this year is wherever you are, there you are. That's the biggest thing I learned, you know, because like I've been in Birmingham my entire life. I've always talked about, uh, -uh sorry, we, we showing the painting today because London yeah, walking. Yeah. London, oh, why don't you just reposted my stuff when you called? How about that? Oh, wait, hold on. Oh, that's that big. <laughs> I gotta be a little quicker with that, but whoa, that's big. <laughs> look, look, this is exclusive. You're hearing it here first. Yeah, it, it's definitely <laughs> no, exclusive, right? Here. Thank you. Thank you. I ain't even I ain't even go look at it, but the biggest thing I learned was uh wherever you are, there you are. And mm -hmm. it's because like I've been in Birmingham uh my whole entire life my entire life i've always talked about oh i'm gonna move i'm gonna move i'm gonna move and this time i just completely took a leap of faith but you know it's interesting because a lot of times people move for different reasons you know mm -hmm. my move my the move the what pushed me to actually go ahead and move is the fact that like i've been in birmingham and i've been lacking inspiration it's not a lot of art it's it's art it's the art scene out there but it's not as huge as like right. Georgia, you know, or other mm -hmm. places. So, so moving out here, it just really showed me that, um, you know, from me, I can move all day long, you know, in, in any space. And if, and wherever I am with myself, that's where I'm going to be wherever I go after that, you know? So, um, I was very comfortable in my home or whatever. I'll just paint, as you can see, I'll just be painting. Mm -hmm. And it's cool, you know, but I didn't get out much. And when I came out here, it's almost like I 
had an idea of what life would be like out here, but it's mm-hmm. nothing to my actual experience in which I haven't experienced a lot, but I noticed that I'm still in my space painting. Ain't nothing really changed. So, mm-hmm. but I, I will say that in um, who you're surrounded by is the second biggest thing that I have learned this year. So in that, it's just like when they talk about when a lot of millionaires, billionaires talk about how you are the average of your five surrounding friends, it's not a lot because normally if you don't know who you are, look at your surroundings. And I right. noticed that like, even when I go and meet people and I spend a lot of my time with them, they're probably a lot similar to the friends that I have, you know, in you know, wherever I'm Something going. reminds them of them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's just like, it just lets you know it. If you ever want to know who you are, just look at your surroundings and it'll, it'll reveal itself to you. You can't have a, you can't always have a problem and not be the problem type thing. Right. So, yeah. but yeah, that's my biggest lesson that I learned this year. I'm so overwhelmed. I really didn't even go look at the video that yeah. I didn't get what he reposted. So I'm just like, let me just. Yeah. Chill. <laughs> nah, but see, that's so dope. That's one thing I respect about you too. Like, even like you're not one of those artists that come like if nobody knows, like I said, strange, they wouldn't even know how that's even going on. Like, you know, you definitely hit like, you know, I would say like what well, a lot of people are trying to go to get that acknowledgement of their work or get these reposts and stuff like that. But you carry yourself real humble, like you know, some artists that be full of themselves and you know, you'll see it depicted a lot where it's like, oh, you can't even walk or talk to me because I'm on this type of level now. Like, um, you know, yeah, but no. when I, I I hear about stuff like that and yeah. I, it's just honestly, truthfully, you just realize that so many things is just a way of life. This is just how people are, especially in our community, our culture. Right. Yeah. We're not used to having a lot of things. So when we get a little something, it's like our head blow up. We don't want to, we gatekeep. We mm-hmm. don't care. We don't see the investment into like actually working with one another. And another thing, I, I it's crazy that you asked me what's the biggest lesson because truthfully yeah. the biggest lesson is wherever you are, there you are. But I learned also like a lot of people, you know, Sometimes it's not about money, it's about the relationships. That is the stock. And our community don't understand, a lot of times our community don't understand the value of stock. It's like we we immediately want our return in whatever we invest in, we invest in. And that's just normally not even the case. Not even as far as I've gotten in my career, is that even the case? Because technically speaking, I just started painting one day and somebody decided to ask me for a painting, then it just blew up from there. You know, yeah. that stops, you know. So all that to say, go ahead. I'm sorry. I be That's taking over. Up. Nah, just do your thing. Like I say, this ain't a share episode. You feel me? Real amazing. You know what I mean? But so how has 2023 been treating you thus far? 2023, it's I'm grateful, actually. Like mm-hmm. I'm very grateful. It's been treating me pretty well. So um I'm learning a lot of lessons. I'm um I, I feel like I've been in spaces in life, especially in my younger years growing up, because, you know, my grandfather and my mother and them, like, I've learned, you know, I implemented a lot of gratitude. It's like whatever lesson, you know, whatever, whenever I meet a person, I pride myself on learning something from them to take into the next space or whatever. But at some point, I kind of lost myself a little bit. And so now I'm just getting back into that space and having to, you know, remind myself of the steps that I took to get here. So it's just, I'm very grateful to be here and alive and able to do stuff like this. So it's been treating me pretty well. That's what's up. So first and foremost, as we like to push the importance of knowing ourselves in 30 seconds, who is Aina Cheryl as a person outside of artistry? 30 seconds? Who is it? Yo, if somebody was to put you on the spot and be like, who are you? Like, who you are put you? Me on the I, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Who are you? <laughs> you um, me? I guess I am a person of integrity. I am. <laughs> How do I explain this? This is 30 seconds. Okay. So I am a person of integrity. I am 
anybody's biggest cheerleader, even my own. You know, I am a considerate person when it comes to the people I'm loving. And I am a teacher and a student, but more more than anything, a student. Boom. 30 seconds, right? <laughs> yeah, you killed that. That's that's real. Cause when you you ended up and said, you know, you're a student because life is a continuous cycle, you know, and yeah. I feel like some people stop and feel like they know everything, but it's like it's literally like science. Um I talked to an artist like last week on the episode and he was telling me like life is a fair everything so when you're learning like you're unlocking new parts of yourself you know or when you're teaching yourself a new skill it's like brain activity so it's important to like keep you know soaking up much information as you can you know yeah um okay then so a native of dolomite alabama but currently well you did reside in birmingham alabama now you're in georgia now so what is your perspective you know what was it like from your perspective coming up in alabama just in general you know like most would assume alabama just to be more land and city but you know it is like yeah you talking about like a a, a city of rest like, yeah like what was your perspective coming up you know from like a because most say like you know i got family in alabama like you get more rural but then at the same time, they got more survival skills than the people that's in the city type vibe, you know, like learning how to feed them, you know, little stuff that we do need for real. Like our people need in the time like this, instead of like depending on the grocery store or something like that, like, you know, farming and everything, you know, I don't understand like why it costs to eat something that comes from the land you can grow. Like, I don't know. Water costs money. <laughs> I'm telling you. Um, what um how was Birmingham? Yeah, how was it coming up for you? Like what was it like? You know? It was a roller coaster, but it was it's Birmingham for me, in my experience, probably because of my perspective, it's just it wasn't that bad. It wasn't that mm -hmm. bad. It was a, a pretty good space to start in. You know, it's very slow, you know. Um, I think slow is good considering like you know, you have a lot of air and opportunity to expand in whatever you choose to do. And that's Birmingham. It's nice, though. It's it's very chill. Like, yeah. it's very chill. It's wholesome, man. You know, you have your your times where you can just woosah, drive, uh, drive the freeway, and it's not really that busy. You know, have time to reflect. It's, it's pretty a nice place. It's, it's decent. Yeah, so speaking of birmingham like for those who never visited like when you go home you know what are the places you like to go hang out or just you know grab a bite to eat or something um <laughs> my favorite place to eat in birmingham is samurai japan that's for sushi um i like i don't know I like, i'm an american food type person or whatnot um i want to say what about oh I'm gonna tell you, troops and let me think. Troops is a piece of place. I like that place. It was really good. My friend uh, put me onto that place, and I I just love that pizza. And where yeah. else? Tin Roof is a nice bar spot. I don't know. It's it's a nice little space. And as far as like chill at, I don't know, cause like last time I was in Birmingham, like I like I like my balcony. You could see over the ceiling. So any anywhere downtown is nice. It's very nice yeah mm -hmm. what's up so present time today like who or what would you say made you the person you are today like molded you into the person you are my granddaddy my grandfather 100 percent um mm -hmm. he what well, is a man of integrity and perspective and so i feel like if it wasn't really for him i don't think i would have made it anywhere honestly because like perspective is a way of life truthfully your perspective drives you to whether or not you know you on the streets or you know you make it off the streets or you're successful or you're not successful or you're in a stagnant place or in a high place your perspective of life and what happens to you and in every situation it makes you who you are so i want to say that my grandfather played a huge role into who i am today like the biggest role like I would, I probably have issues or 
any parent parental issues or whatever with my mom and daddy and my grandfather. I come to him. He was like my best friend. I come to him, tell him literally everything. And he would genuinely give me perspective on how to handle it, but also be graceful. So it's it's very helpful. I'm, it's probably the most wealthiest things I've ever experienced when it came to a human being. Nah, most definitely. Shout out to granddad, because you you had me thinking about my granddad since yeah. then, you know, and that and that's everything, you know. He was a stand up and you know gave it to me how he was supposed to, you know. One thing yeah. about it, you know, if it ain't gonna be no deep, deep conversation, because you know, times have changed, like yeah. but he at the same time, he he had more of a I'm accepting, you know, times change, kids is different now, but at the same time, like, well, what's going on with you? All right, you got this going, mm -hmm. make sure you got some, you're doing something to get some paper in your pocket and you stand out the way. Like, yeah, that, that's something that meant a lot, you know. Yeah. Um, so being that you started, you know, you began your art journey in your childhood, like, what are your earliest memories, like a blast from the past moment, like, that you look back on now, you know, from where you first started? Um, <laughs> I was five years old and I remember walking around the entire house asking everybody, could I draw their face? That was just, that, it's just so funny to even think about that considering like, I'm, I wasn't thinking about drawing. I was really thinking about, you know, I was just a kid, you know? And so just thinking about the fact that I was five asking to draw faces and now I'm drawing face and painting faces is insane because it's like mm -hmm. wow you probably should really pay attention to the things that your kids do but truthfully no one would have caught that because you know a kid being a kid but mm -hmm. i think it's i think god has a way of letting us know you know what our purpose is especially from the very start it just take a little paying attention so that's my earliest memory of my childhood that's the that's the main memory i have right now <laughs> Nah, that is dope. I like how you said that too, you know, because in a sense, like some people, like, um, even that you're doing what you're doing now, considering you was five years old, you know, with that ambition already, like or just doing that and to still be doing it now, like, you know, that little girl that was five years old is still showing herself right now, you know. Yeah. And um, a lot of people, you know, some people kind of bear their childhood, either hobbies or whatever and stuff like that as they get older, you know, and they be like, man, I wish I would have kept doing this or doing that. Like, and it takes a lot of discipline too to be doing something like consecutive for years, like, you know, and not just fall off and start doing something else or just forget about it period. So yeah, you know, that's definitely big. Um, so when was the first time that you, you know, remember? like realizing that you're a creative person you know as a child was it that moment of drawing the faces at five or i was like, how did you get into it i was in seventh grade i transferred from aj guest into this school called named hueytown high um i wasn't even in high school i was in middle school i think it was Pittman at the time but yeah i was in seventh grade and the teacher gave an assignment to draw i want to say draw a portrait of yourself and i remember i never drew a portrait of nobody like a real life portrait mm -hmm. but i already imagined what it what it was going to look because like i i believe that i'm a like ongoing perfectionist in my own little way especially at that time when i was in seventh grade so i can see it before i do it so i drew my i did my portrait <laughs> my self portrait and i yeah. think i won like i, I want to say i won first prize on it because it was so detailed it looked just like it that's when everybody realized oh man she can really draw mm -hmm. which is crazy <laughs> it's yeah. really crazy how life happens so yeah nah that's that's dope like i was just you know, like i say i'm just sitting here soaking everything up because i'm saying thing like you know i do music and that's been like something i've been doing since i was a kid you know so it's like I don't know i can't really break away from it like i can't just stop doing it you know that's the type of feeling i got for it like even if it's like you know okay the money ain't coming fast whatever but it's like i've i've had a lot of different opportunities just come from the consistency you know mm -hmm. of just making it happen but i don't ever think i ever just fall out of love with music like 
It's gonna yeah. be some type of way I have my hands involved with it. But um, yeah. do you think like your childhood? Do you think your experiences in your childhood like influenced a lot of what you do right now too, even in your art? Yeah, yeah I think so. I think so. I feel like in, I've been broke. I, I've been hurt a lot, you know, disappointed a lot. And I believe that from my experience and all the disappointment, yeah. it's caused me to be able to do this. Because a lot of times what I would do is when I was painting, I would paint out of pure revenge. Like, I just, I don't know. It's just so, it's so weird when I say it out loud. Like, I really would paint out of revenge because, like, I was so disappointed. I felt um i didn't value myself as much as i should especially since i was expecting other people to value me you know and so i was angry a lot and i just put put it all in my paintings however i never painted what i wanted to paint at the same time yeah. i just would paint like celebrities and stuff like that and so when i would do that that's what most of the revenge would go into their face but now now I operate off a whole nother system that don't have anything to do with revenge. Yep. Nah, that is dope. Thank like, you. Like to just channel to channel it on a different perspective. Like you started out like this, and then you turn it into something else. More like I wouldn't even say you wouldn't have had a love, but it's like the intention of it is different now. Yeah. You know? Intention. Very. Mm -hmm. You so right. So how would you define art? just in general like your perspective your definition um i would define art as art is an experience that everyone should take note of like art that's just what it is like i believe that even when three people look at the same piece they have a different you know feeling or perspective that come out of it and they, it's based off of their own experience so I, that's how I would define art. I would define art as a gateway from uh, a gateway to the, someone else's heart and transfer to another person's experience. Hey, man. That was pretty dope. So, yeah. For <laughs> real. So uh, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to pull it all out of you, feel me? You got the passion for art, and this is what you love to do. So I want you, I need you to talk about it for real. Yeah. How you really feel. <laughs> So do you think there's a driving force that inspires you, you know, when you get to working on these different pieces? Say that again. Do you think there's like a driving force that inspires you? Um, like something I that guess... just motivates you to keep keep like having a hunger for it? Um what is my drive? So at first, my drive was, you know, I really was just, you know, trying to make a, a name for my art, you know, for when my kids get here so they can have some someone they can be proud of or whatnot. But now I my drive is just my emotions. I learned to, you know, transfer my emotions into my pieces. So my drive is being able to see how I feel. That is my biggest drive. And also to be a person who inspires other people to want to, you know, venture off and do the best they can with, you know, even a, a idea that they have, no matter if it's small or big or even so, especially for the kids, I want the kids to be able to see themselves, I mean, see themselves in me. So, because I didn't really have, like, that's the thing about Birmingham. You don't see this all the time. I don't think I can remotely name an artist that I grew up watching that was a painter except for Bob Ross on the television. Um, right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so because I didn't see that, to become that person in such a small city or one of the people in such a small, because it's a few other artists um, in Birmingham that I, that I absolutely love, but it's not that many, especially, like, it's not a lot of black women. I think I know about three or four black women artists in Birmingham or whatnot. Yeah. So, what? But with that being said, I want children to grow up to see themselves in me or see that. Oh, I want to do what she do and all of that. So, yeah, I just want to be a person of inspiration since that's our only duty in life is mm -hmm. to inspire people. <laughs> yeah, we all, you know, everybody putting their hands in the pot with one another. You know, yeah. basically taking what you do to another level to where it can touch other people. 
And that's why this is called Healer Be Healed as well, because you are healing people, you know. Right. I hear with all the pieces that you're doing and stuff, it's speaking volumes to people, you know, the world. Like I say, you're doing artwork with certain individuals and they reposting it, you know, because it touches them. Thank you. Um, yes. So do you ever create hidden messages or meanings in your work? Um, from time to time. From time yeah. to time. I'm probably going to get more into that at some point, but right now it's just <laughs> right now my pieces are so complex that mm -hmm. it's like to add a hidden message into it would be even more complex <laughs> but which i should start doing it i think i will start uh adding hidden messages i feel like that childhood dreams one definitely was one and yeah. you went unless you like i say uh when you broke it down that was like a personal experience for you you know yeah. but looking at it it's just like you can kind of put together like what's going on here like yeah it, may, it put it puts you like in a deep thought like why is this you know the cigarette right here and yeah. you know definitely thank you thank you that was probably the start of messages being put in my paintings right the start of it so so what do you consider to be your greatest accomplishment and why my greatest accomplishment um yeah so starting, far with the starting, starting yeah my greatest accomplishments i've met a lot of people been in a lot of rooms a lot of spaces i know that that's not going to stop i know it's just going to get bigger from here but right now yes, starting because just to go back and think about every obstacle that took place that could have kept me from doing it from starting anything i don't know where i'll probably not on on here with you you know starting i think for anybody starting should be probably one of the greatest accomplishments because that is such a huge decision to do you know especially coming from a place where i didn't even know i was going to be painting people i really right. just quit. i really just quit my job and i had nothing to lose and i was in school and somebody you know taught me how to i asked somebody to teach me how to uh paint with watercolor because I already knew how to draw. I just didn't know how to paint. And it just went up from there. And it's just interesting because starting is the biggest thing. Some people have to drastically start. Some people have mm -hmm. to decide, oh, I'm about to go do makeup today. And this is going to be my business. My business just really chose me. It's like, it just chose me. I didn't even think yeah. I was going to be painting. <laughs> I didn't think, I thought I was going to be working at Matt Cosmetics for a long time. I thought I was going to retire there. Cause I love, mm -hmm. love makeup. I love to do makeup, but I guess that was just a season <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> to get me, me going. Uh, I will say if uh, anybody's watching this, that um, I realized something from working at Mac. I realized that most of the time you don't have to work a job that is draining you or depressing. I think everything has its ups and downs, but mm -hmm. working at Mac made me realize that you can actually work at a place that you enjoy working at that that adheres to your to what you like to do you know if you like to do makeup work at a makeup counter if you mm -hmm. like to count numbers work at a bank you know if you like to read work in the library it's like little levels you know little things that you can really do to not pressure your pressure yourself into stress so mm -hmm. I don't think that I think most of the time people look at, you know, creative spaces like it's oh, they don't really pay, uh, you know, they don't really pay. And that's not really something you can live off of. Honestly, if anything, to be a creative, <laughs> I don't see how you can't make a lot of money being a creative. You're the right. one that creates. If you have if you are creating, you know, something from yourself to give to people, why wouldn't you think you can create a space where you can make the most out of it? You know, so yeah, I, nah, I don't. That was deep. <laughs> that was deep. <laughs> that was deep. Like create if you're a creator, create you a space where you can. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's deep. That's real. Thank you, mm -hmm. but yeah, I just I don't never see nobody really talk about that. You know, you you hear people, and I was one of those people who was just like, you know, just quit your job. But what I think I was really expressing was you don't have to work the job you don't even like. And you don't have to convince yourself that you like it. A lot of people be like, yeah, I like my job. 
And it's like, no, you don't. <laughs> you you can possibly like your job, you know, mm-hmm. not because of me, but because of how you're expressing how you like your job. You, I, I actually love what I do because I get to create whenever I want to. I get mm-hmm. to make my own times, you know. I get to, you know, venture off, learn. The best part about my career is that I can wake up whenever I want, <laughs> and I don't have to get up and go put clothes on to go to a job, you know, and uh, I'm saying jobs are cool, but Mm -hmm. what I'm saying is make sure that whatever it is you choose to do for yourself, you love it. That's just it. That's it. Nah, that's real. Cause like you say, people got to invest on themselves too. So it's like when you make that investment in yourself to be like, all right, I want to go full, like entrepreneur, everything like, you got to really put the work in and invest on what you're doing, like invest the time. I mean, it don't always got to be money either because the time that you invest on something you love to do, everything else going to fall in place, you know, that's just the harder you work. That's very um, true. So which of your creations gives you the most pride slash satisfaction, you know, after you completed it? Which, which one? Yeah, like which one of your pieces give you the most pride slash satisfaction? Childhood dreams. Okay, while we speak on that, let me let me go on and show this right here too. You know what I mean? Okay. So a a michelleartistry dot com. You feel me? Is you being completely mm-hmm. prepared? <laughs> oh yeah, I was ready. Yeah. Let me move on a little bit. Okay. So yeah. So you know, if you don't mind uh giving the people a little glimpse of the, the piece right here, a brief that, background. That is childhood dreams. I <laughs> I created that piece from pain, a lot of pain. I compromised myself for love. Um the lady in the middle, the woman in the middle, she's an inspiration of, I think, I believe, um, a model named Adult, maybe, but I know the hair for sure is um, Grace Jones. And so I kind of like combined those pieces to kind of reflect the artistry that they embody, you know, in, you know, beauty in their own stance and creativity. So she's really an artist who, you know, really loves excruciatingly wide right so she (laughs) so the cigarettes represent her compromising herself considering like she doesn't like smoking she doesn't like uh, you know anything regarding that and to being able to be around someone that she loves and she's pretty much compromising herself because she's around him and he's a smoker and she's staying for the excuses and she's pretty much like draining herself because she loves other people outside of her more than she loves herself and 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 in fact if you look at the cigarettes like the filter part i believe the filter part is on the outside of her which shows you know and the burning part is on the inside of her which pretty much shows the consumption of all the bs that's on on the outside of her so yeah so you can see right there you know at the bottom the bottom right hand corner where she's pretty much like deteriorating from the inside out so yes she is so pretty though <laughs> that was well detailed I mean, oh, it, was, it was definitely eye-catching you know because it's just I, like music oh say that again oh no i was just also going to say um and every part of her physical being or whatnot every part of her is a reflection of the things that I have that people used to talk about. So I have big lips. I make sure I put the big lips, full lips in there or whatnot. Also the neck being so long. I don't think my neck that long, but I put that in there. So it's pretty much like embracing all the crazy things that I didn't heard over the time of my life. So yeah. Um, yeah. That's back so- to it. If your art were to be edible, what would it taste like? Like, would it be that meal where it's so good, where the consumer, like, keep their head down the whole time? Like, don't even lift up for no air. Is that tasty? Like, 
Um, <laughs> let me think. If my art was an edible, mm-hmm. I think it'll be it'll be a ghost pepper. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's hot. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Hot. Give that kick. Uh, hit you at the wrong. Hit you at the right times. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, I can yeah. see that. Yeah, yeah. You give a kick every time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like, hmm, this is nice. Oh, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So, do you create with the intent to send a message? Like, um, like how how important it is that the audience understand the piece. Like, once it finished. How important is it that an uh, audience? Like, yeah, like the audience, you know, understand the message or the piece. It's very important, but honestly, if they don't understand the message, it doesn't bother. It wouldn't bother me, like because my pieces are already so complex. So, and I think that's the beauty of it being like all over the place is that you can hear so many different perspectives of the piece. So yeah, like you got straightforward pieces, and you have pieces that's not so straightforward. So I like I like. You know the variety of different i uh different perspectives when it comes to my work so if people don't understand it that's cool with me uh i used to i actually used to care if my pieces look like the pieces i was trying to portray but now um since i've created messages in my pieces it really don't even matter like i'm painted oh the one that you bought i painted that yeah, clown yeah. the guy the clown go ahead and show yeah, them the clown yeah. I don't think they, oh yeah, I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna show it to them on the website. Yeah, that was dope. Like that right. just everything was dope, but that stood out to me a lot. Yeah, that piece for me was an experience piece. So <laughs> it was a nice piece. You know, I was feeling I was feeling my emotions at the time. I was just like, oh my goodness, I'm just so sick of it, you know. So I just put it on canvas. And it just came out so dope. I had an idea. I had an idea based off of, you know, what I was going through. And I was trying to, you know, I was, it's actually a respectable piece or whatever. I wasn't being mean with it, but I was being clear. I was being very clear, you know. <laughs> um, but also, I don't know. I think you're going to see a lot of apologies in my pieces because, like, if you look under the piece, that you have under the eye you'll see sorry under it that's hard it is but look it's not the same thing if you read it it's not the same thing about something yeah i see yeah i see so i got a few more things to do i gotta finish this side and it's supposed to look like a book you see So it's supposed to look like a book, but yeah, this is my favorite book, one of my favorite books. So I be trying, I be just trying to find inspiration from wherever I go or whatnot. Yeah. I'm finally realizing that from being in Georgia, I felt like I wasn't like a real artist because so many artists around me be always painting. They always painting, and I'm like, okay, okay, cool, okay. So I was like, dang, I might not be a real artist because I don't paint all the time. Like I paint a lot of orders. I paint a lot of orders, but I don't like paint for myself a lot. And since I've been out here and I've seen how other people do it, it's almost like like I'm getting accustomed to like the wave of them like really being into their stuff, especially as an artist, since I don't see that all the time. So I just figure instead of waiting for a great idea, how about I just paint whatever yeah. and the great idea come so yeah but yeah i love i love that i painted this though i honestly that's one of my favorite paintings <laughs> that is hard that's hard isn't that yeah. crazy yeah that's hard like so, everything looks spot on but like you said it's that twist that you put in there too but yeah. it looks like flesh like like you can tell you've been perfecting your artistry since you was that five-year-old little girl yeah <laughs> Oh yeah, that's dope. Are there any creative so- individuals you admire in the art world? I admire a lot of creative individuals. Um, there is this artist out here in Georgia. Her name is Tiffany Davis. I hope 
I think ATL Art Vibes. That's yeah. her. Yeah, I got you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love Tiffany. <laughs> yeah, that's love dope, too. Shout out to her. Yeah, Jilly, um, this guy named Hobo. Let me think. It's so many. The Pretty Artists. I feel like The Pretty Artists is really the reason why I just kept going. Like, um, she in California. She's such a fantastic young artist, young Black woman artist. And she's vibrant, too. Um, let me think. Who else? It's so many, and I feel so. I should have just you should. I should have just not answered it because now I gotta really think about it. Uh, think about everybody. Who else? I like Mike Dargis. He's a great painter. Um, this girl named Brittany Arts. I believe she's in uh Chicago, maybe Chicago, Ohio, or something like that. It's so many. It's so many, and I feel. I know now. I feel bad because I know it's. <laughs> I know it's this one particular person and I can't even think of their name, but it's just too many. It's too many to choose from. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. I like All the right. artist. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what's up. So, the spirituality and culture oh. play a role in your art. Oh, oh, here we go. What's going on? Her name on? is Jamie and Whitney. Oh, we just going to, oh, Jamie, Whitney, and yeah. uh, I'm going to tell you one more. <laughs> oh, Let me much. think of one more. Okay, just keep going. <laughs> oh, I was gonna say the spirituality and culture play a role in your art as well. Um, yes, uh, I think it's the main it's the main role that it plays in my art. So, spirituality, yeah, yeah, I believe so. I believe that uh, with my relationship with God, I really feel like well, I know God talked to me, but I know that He tell He let me know, you know. Like mm -hmm. he let me know what to paint and what not to paint all of that. Next idea come in. Yeah. Yeah. So um I painted a piece one day and I had complete deja vu. The big the hugest moment of deja vu in the world. Cause I was like, oh my goodness, have I painted this before? And turns out uh I think I had a dream about it. I think God told me I was gonna paint that picture and I, it ended up going viral. But I didn't realize it until I was halfway into the painting where oh my goodness i'm having deja vu and when it went viral i knew god had told me i was going to be painting that so yeah no oh, that's amazing so when you're working on these pieces like oh, how do you oh oh what's that oh, okay bethany bethany i can't forget the yeah. girl bethany <laughs> i yeah, was like, yeah, like she's gonna be she gonna come for you huh yeah like not just Brittany, <laughs> bethany too but yeah it's a lot of great artists but go ahead most down so how do you know when a piece or project is finished and needs no additional work to it? Like, you know, all right, this is it. All right. When I feel easy. When I feel yeah. easy. When I feel like I said all I could say in that piece. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, like so, a book. it's like a book. Like, I, you know when you're done with a chapter. Yeah. You know, but all you got, you got to keep reading until you get to the end of the book. So, yeah. My, my art is an ongoing book. Oh, most definitely. And I feel like even with your portfolio, you know, as long as you continue, you know, on this journey, it's going to be a great portfolio to go on for generationally, you know. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. So how much how much your love is for art and how strong the passion is? You got 24 hours left, you know, to live. Like, would it be something you would spend doing on your last day? You talking about my art? Yeah, like, you know, as much as you got love and a passion for it, like you got 24 hours left to live. Would that be something like you know would spend your day doing, like on your last day? Dang. Um, I probably will write. I probably will write a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think I would paint. I think I would probably doodle in a mm -hmm. in a book that I'm writing in. I probably, if I had 24 hours to live, I'd probably go and i knew i had 24 hours to live i'll probably right. rush to the store get a book or have a uh, have a book that i have now and i'll probably be writing all day long and i'll probably also um go to my my favorite spot a spot that has good food i'm probably over consumed mm -hmm. i'll probably do a lot of stuff but i know that if i do end up painting i would probably the last thing i would paint is a heart in my yeah. journal 
in my journal. So it's something that I left behind or whatever. My last words, if you will, and my yeah. last paint, my last painting. No, wow, that's, that's a good that's question. A good, that's a good answer. That, yeah, that's very detailed. Because you know, it, it takes too long. It takes too long yeah. to paint. It just takes yeah. too long. And I wouldn't. I so that would be know. like a word, a word that gives you visuals when you read it, like a story, like you could see exactly the imagery when you read it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I would cool. write all if I had 24 <laughs> hours, I, I think I would not go to sleep on purpose. I think yeah. I think okay, say y'all say uh whatever say i have 24 hours to live right now start you know mm -hmm. right now whatever starting in, in the next hour yeah um or starting tomorrow 24 full hours i think i'll go to sleep right get off the thing with you go to sleep i'll be knocked out and then the next day starting at 12 a.m i will be mm -hmm. up i will be up for real i will be up and i just be writing anything come to mind right 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 no, nah, that sounds like somebody that really has a true love for what they're doing, you know. <laughs> Definitely. For oh, real. Thanks. So, have you ever felt that your personal expectations have limited your, limited your creativity at any point? And if so, like how how you did how have you dealt with it? Um, honestly, truthfully, I think my personal expectations have limited have limited how far I got in my career and my personal expectations go in terms of everything outside of my career you know yeah. like my interactions with people relationships and all of that I think that that probably my decision in that probably has limited me a lot or whatever or it did limit me a lot and now I'm just not going uh, now I'm on a whole nother wave and no limit. because of <laughs> consistent decision makings yeah ain't no i'm not limiting myself because because honestly like how you know i i don't have any regrets when it comes to my career but i start to have regrets when it comes to my interactions with certain p individuals you right. know and so my regrets so for as for now like as i'm not involved or you know not really sharing my time with too many people or whatnot you know whether it's relatives friends relationships whatever now now in this space i don't have no regrets you know i'm just in the flow and i'm breezing and i'm learning and i'm just embracing or whatever but when i be around people certain people or whatever and not even just certain people just people sometimes it just it's they share their life with you and you have to be able to manage your individual individuality compared to the camaraderie of that relationship and it's just sometimes it can be a little overwhelming you know i yeah. i'm a loner so i can think clearly by myself <laughs> sometimes i don't i enjoy that. advice advice is cool yeah. it's nice you know but yeah. At the end of the day, I'm gonna do what I want to do sometimes, and yeah. most of the time, God gonna direct me. So yeah, I feel yeah. That. like yeah, I'm like this, I'm telling you, this is why I love I love this painting, this one right here, because like I've been having this on my mind for the past um, week or two. I just ain't do mm -hmm. it and today. I ain't talked to nobody today, and today mm -hmm. I just was just like I woke up, and it was just tugging at my heart to do it. And you know what's interesting? You have those moments where you contemplate if you should do something, and, right. the, and the other part is tugging on you to do it. You know? Yeah. Ain't oh, it the difference? <laughs> yeah. so, oh man, that's crazy. That's real. I'm, yeah. So I'm start. So I'm embracing going with feeling. You know, going with mm. intuition. So like today, I was gonna make a post. It was. It was. Uh, it was tut what was it hold on what i say um it was i was contemplating it i was like really contemplating it and i just accepted it. if i gotta think twice about it just don't do it mm. you know then today with the tugging on my heart to do this painting i said let me just go ahead and do it or whatever mm. and I, I just felt good doing that that that's why we had to do another time because i got so caught up in this yeah <laughs> So yeah, but it's like it's either tugging you or it's rejecting you. So you just gotta go with it and see where that leads you. I bet, I bet if 
if if anybody would embrace just going with the feeling, going with the moment that you feel, you know, going with the moment that you feel and just being very clear about the feeling that you're getting, like, don't do it, do it. I wonder how far you can go in life. That's how I end up meeting um, Beyonce mama. Like, it was something tugging on me. Whoa. Too. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I was on that one. I was pleased. No. <laughs> That's how I met her because you know I felt God tugging on me to book that flight, like yeah. the flight. But I didn't know she was going to be down there. You know, I was I wondered, you know, but I didn't know she was going to be yeah. down there, and she ended up being down there. Still and I ended up her. Way. <laughs> yeah, so it yeah. works out. You that's just gotta embrace up. the feeling. That's what's up. Thanks. Nah, that's amazing. You know, like I say, from the five-year-old little girl that didn't probably knew the vision that she wanted to be for herself, but mm -hmm. now to be, you know, where everything organically falling in place. Like, I feel like you're doing it because you love it, but everything else is is falling in place, you know, in a sense. Like, you know, I feel like you're doing it for the purpose of really loving to do art and then shoot all the money, all the recognition, the accolades, that stuff's just going to come, you know? Yeah. Like, I feel like people, if they just focus on what they truly like to do, everything else, like, don't be be patient for that. But, you know, being patient to be consistent, like, keep putting stuff out, keep doing what you like to do. Yeah. You know? So what obstacles, if any, have you had to deal with in your life or career? And, like, what are the biggest challenges you had in the realm of your art? What obstacles? Yeah, like, if any, you had to deal with either in life or your career and like what are your biggest challenges you had to you know in the realm of your art being on the same page with people being on the same page um the obstacle i i don't really i don't see that i had a lot of them except for just i think being misunderstood is my biggest obstacle because it's almost as if like i'm in my own world <laughs> it's like i'm in my own world and like not many I felt I feel like if you're in the mind of an artist you have you have a lot to deal with you know you have a lot to deal with like not even just to deal with you have a lot to try to understand because like you know there's just not one way of painting this it's a gazillion different ways of painting it where that's how our mind works so I think my biggest obstacle is people you know putting me in a box because yeah. because they don't understand the complexity that come with thinking as an artist. I can agree with, I can have, I can double think, you know, meaning agree with two different, just we having a conversation here and I'm having a conversation here. It may sound like I'm contradicting, but I agree with both points, you know, because I see both points. You have to be able to see both points in order to do what we do. You have to see. A, a trillion more points after those two points and the biggest obstacle that i reach in that is like having to be prideful of my time and who i speak to because that's happened to your psyche when they talk about uh, when people talk about protecting your energy it is very important because everything comes from energy it's like a battery right it's like a battery you have you're on a hundred percent Everything you consume dictates if your battery, how fast your battery go down, you know, mm -hmm. your battery going to go down. You're using your energy regardless, like, and it can go up too, based off of how you recharge. Some, sometimes, sometimes the only way to recharge is to really to go to sleep, sleep that shit off, you know, because it's really? <laughs> it, sometimes yeah. other people's, other people's way of thinking is overwhelming and it can tap into your world when it was never supposed to be a part of that. So the bit, I, so to answer your question is to be understood. And if you want to yeah. be understood, Lil Wayne got this song called misunderstood. Mm -hmm. And, um, I think go, if you go on my website, yeah. you will see a painting of Nina Simone with the piano on her head. So I was inspired by that song because she was on the song and you know, the piano was on the head, but I mean, it's just a long story, but anyways, he was, Lil Wayne was just talking about how much he, he prefers to be misunderstood, you know, 
And he was like, you thought Lil Wayne was Wheezy, but Wheezy is Wayne. I said, oh, oh my man. gosh. That man. You know what I'm saying? Do you know Do you know how complex of a thinker he got to be to be that creative in what he says on a track? <laughs> that is insane. Like, do he can't talk to a one track mind. It'll stunt his growth, you know? It'll limit his ability. And truthfully, I think with artists, and I'm gonna say this with all the respect, I don't think that I don't think you can't you can really tell us what to do, you know? Like no. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, my bad. No, nah, I was gonna say no, nah, art artists like that though. Like, even with me being an artist, like I have certain criteria for myself, like I've like probably over 15 years now. So like music now, it's like I keep my same mentality. I studied music before I even played instruments. Like that yeah. helped me learn how to, you know, pick up rhythm and everything like that and understand certain tones and cadences. Mm -hmm. That's why I feel like my versatility, like I can do any record or beat, don't matter. Like, but I don't want to limit myself to like I got a criteria where I got to give some type of substance. Like I gotta have either have you think real hard about what I said or have you on a what is nostalgia? And Not, I don't know. I, yeah, I either have you on that type of vibe. I'm a nineties baby, so I might throw some in there. Like I said, uh, one of the records I just did, I did like I I usually do that too. That was inspired by when like I hop on somebody beat and just flip the whole thing into something else. Uh, I said my sister having visions. You would think I'm Corey Baxter. So it's like somebody watched back in the day. Why is that so <laughs> red? I don't. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I, I let you know. Like I'm a nineties baby, so I'm gonna yeah. make you think. Though I'm gonna throw stuff in there to make you. Oh, hold on, wait a minute. Oh, that what he talking about? Oh, it just hit. Like you know, make you feel good a bit. Really with the nostalgia, you know. Yeah, um, Sim simplicity is boring. You know, it's so boring. Like I'm a born, I'm a real life born person for real. Yeah. I'm super duper born. But my mind, like I, I, I could talk all day because I yeah. got so much on my mind. I don't think my mind boring at all. It's just like I'm a debate with you. I, I just had to get to my father asked me. He was like, "Uh, why you be debating with these men?" I said, "Daddy, I don't be debating. We just be." talking you know mm -hmm. but <laughs> come to think about it i have so much on my mind and so many different points of views that it's just like it can come off as debating but i'm really sharing my my world with you when you when you can involve yourself with people who allows you to tap into their mind they're mm -hmm. really sharing their whole world with you you know and it's like i don't really half the time i'm not entirely disagreeing with people like if you tell me something i'm not going to be like you're wrong right. no that's crazy no that don't even make sense i wouldn't even really say that because i already understand where you're coming from i understand you coming from a place where you really believe that so it's something in your life that didn't took place for you to believe that so it's found on that for me you know half the time you don't gotta expound i just i get it <laughs> i get it yeah. you know but yeah so like what are words of wisdom for like someone starting out you know to be an inspired artist like you would give to them just start yeah just start and don't yeah. and realize that that's the call this just start just start that's <laughs> that's the biggest thing ever just start and don't be discouraged about the things that you see mm -hmm. um remember that in all ways there is a up middle down and below you know once you understand that you can just flow into what you're gonna do regardless if it goes good then you know naturally that comes with matter of fact i read this book called uh the four agreements very common book for people to talk about but it does talk about don't take anything personal not even the good stuff don't take anything personal, not even the good stuff. Because the thing is, if you devote too much of your emotions into things that take place, then it's the very thing that could probably break you. So if you get too happy with the thing, like you can be appreciative and grateful. But if 
a man buys you flowers and you know not you know what i'm saying if a man buys a woman flowers and she's just absolutely ecstatic that he bought her flowers what happens when he doesn't buy her flowers after that mm -hmm. you know it's like you it's like the saying goes you know you live by the gun you die by the gun mm -hmm. type thing so that's why you don't take anything personal not even the good stuff but what you can do is be appreciative and embrace the moment and love it for what it is so and also your only job in life to do the only thing you're supposed to do in this life is to inspire other people that's it you can't orchestrate what they choose to do what they don't choose to do you can't run them the only person that you're in control of is you so what you do with your time is solely based off of you that's it so if you you know my word of wisdom is really to just remember it's all about you you can be considerate if you want to but is it necessary <laughs> Is it necessary? Because a lot of times consideration stunts your growth too. Sometimes you gotta break the rules respectfully. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes yeah. you gotta you sometimes you gotta, you know, bump on people elbows or shoulders, or, you know, whatever the saying is. Sometimes you gotta sometimes you gotta ruffle feathers just to get where you're going. Because at the end of the day, you have one life to live and it's your life to live, and you choose to live it by any way possible without hurting people physically you know people gonna be hurt by off of you going after your dream <laughs> you can't control that you know just keep going for yourself it's all about you yeah that's real <laughs> hey i'm over here with my arms crossed and my feet crossed man that's how i know i'm listening I'm over here like... <laughs> it's all about you for real man right. and people before i go like really people often live their life for other people mm -hmm. they miss out and this the saddest part about when people live their life for other people the people that um let me say this in order most of the time the people that live their life for other people aren't even aware that they're doing it they're not even aware mm -hmm. so meaning life is withering away because <laughs> truthfully people are Sad in it yeah people as much as people are self ish people are selfless too so it's mm -hmm. just like you live in your life for other people and that person is taking advantage of you not entirely on purpose to hurt but mm -hmm. to be convinced fuck convenience okay i'm sorry i'm gonna just say that respectfully because i've been in a space in life where i was always trying to be of convenience and then i realized that if they don't like me now with me doing something good, they ain't gonna mm -hmm. like me when I pop the fuck off, you know? Straight up. Yeah. So it's just like what they say, I always they say it's people gonna say always have something to say, whether good or bad. If you do I, something good, they're gonna find something bad. If you do something bad, they really gonna talk. So and and know. talk and talk to a people pleaser, talk to a legit person <laughs> who believe in people pleasing. And when they tap out of that people pleasing, I used to be extremely a people pleaser in high school, especially in earlier, earlier yeah. years, people pleaser Understand. Understand. until I realized that, you know, it don't matter if I do good or bad. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, but yeah. So before we get you out of here, we got to talk about the accolades, you know? So when social media is popular online stays, the shade room reposted a life size finger painted canvas of the late rap star Nipsey Hussle, more than 17,000 people were subjected to this healing. Like, what was going through your mind, you know, the initial moment when you saw that the shade room who posted your contact? Um, truthfully, I was mad. I was upset. Not because Whoa. they reposted it. I was upset because, like, I genuinely painted that picture because mm -hmm. of to show my respects. Like, I really painted that picture. It wasn't about numbers or nothing like that and i was upset because they didn't credit you no it, it, no 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 i was i was upset because and i was very young but i was upset because like they showed everybody else's peace and i was just like dang this is crazy like what do you got to do you know because my whole intention was to get it to lauren london that was my whole intention Word. It wasn't about selling it. Honestly, I didn't even sell that painting. I think I still have that painting or whatever yeah. because I, I had so many people wanting to buy it and I just put it to the side. No, because it's 
strictly for Laura London. However, I was um so I was I want I want to say upset. I was just like, wow, like this is what you know, this you know, people, but ball was it baller alert? World star. I think world star reposted it. They just reposted it, and I was just like, dang. And they didn't they didn't uh, repost it and have me share a platform with nobody. They just posted it by itself or whatever. And I think they mentioned something about Lauren Lyon getting the painting or whatnot. So I uh, and once World Star posted it, the Shade Room posted it. <laughs> so I'm appreciative of them, you know, of anybody who supports my work, who shares it, who likes comments, who do all of that. I'm very appreciative of it. Um, I, I was upset at that time, but I it don't matter, you know, at the end of the day, because I know the intentions I came from with it. So um, it that Nipsey painting has uh, reached a lot of, you know, spaces where I'm sure she's seen it. I think uh, did the bodyguard, I think the bodyguard said something, but yeah, but I'm just, I don't know, I'm proud. So I'm proud of being able to honor her with the, her, his family with that piece. Yeah, well, I, still so. got it. I still got it. I ain't going to sell it. <laughs> nah, for real. That was a dope pain though too. Um, hold on. Give me one second. Hold on real quick. Okay. All right, so since then, celebrities such as Cardi B, Trina, Sinbad, many more, can also attest to this heading, to this healing as the artistic genius that is A. Michelle has taken the world by storm. Like many prodigies, A. Michelle was discovered in the comfort of her living room. Yes. Most definitely, like. How does that feel to not even step outside? You know, that's the gift and that's the gift with her social media. Even though it's the gift and the curse, but it leaves, you know, entrepreneurs a, a chance to, you know, get them, themselves out there. How do I feel about it? Right. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. It's nice. Uh, it just lets you know that, you know, we live in a powerful time where technology is is great it's fantastic so it made me feel good to know that it's just that's not the getting yourself out there is not the hardest part you know so you can do it straight from your living room and your bedroom or whatever as long as you stay consistent like you said then you know the world the portal of the world will open up right for you so i'm very proud definitely so with a Michelle being a multinational enterprise how does it feel knowing that your artist serving its purpose at the same time healing and changing lives it feels like i haven't even got started yet as much as we i didn't start it it feels like I, i'm just not starting it just it doesn't sometimes it don't feel real and sometimes it's just this is the power of being obedient to god Nah, that's real for real like even for you to have that same feeling after accomplishing so much you know mm -hmm. that keeps that same drive though like i haven't done enough yet like you know yeah like, let me keep going like you, you're not how can i say it? you're not comfortable you know they say always being uncomfortable is the best thing to be because it keeps that drive going you know some under underdog type mentality yeah, like, what are some of your most memorable moments that you will forever cherish along your journey? Uh, the most memorable. Hmm. I, I believe the relationships that I've built along the way, like, um, I've built a lot of relationships. So I want to say that's probably the main thing I would cherish along this journey. I've learned a lot from the people that I've been able to connect with and it has broadened my reach a, a lot more than it would have if I just did it alone. That's what's up. So okay. any upcoming projects that you would like to share? Any upcoming events? Mm, 
for now, not yet. Not yet. I can't say too much. <laughs> okay, then. Make sure y'all head over to aidenshellartistry.com to check out the prints, the canvas prints, the original artwork as well. Thank um, you. Any special shout outs or recognition you would like to give to those who've been in your corner supporting you along the way? Uh, I want to thank, I want to thank my mama and my grandfather for, you know, instilling values in me and, you know, uh, holding me accountable and lifting me up whenever, whether I was already up or down. So I want to extend my appreciation to them. I, I want to extend my gratefulness to God. I'm very grateful for all that he has done for me. Um, and how much he's, <laughs> how much he, God has been there for me every step of the way and guided me. And I want to appreciate my family, my friends for also showing support and all the people who have, you know, follow me in this journey. So I want to thank you everyone for playing a part in in having a role in my life especially people who treated me wrong thank you for they had the biggest role i <laughs> like how you did that look <laughs> in the most respectful way <laughs> in the most respectful way <laughs> <laughs> so like i say you know appreciate you taking time out you know to come on the platform i appreciate your patience you know what i mean um yeah, just keep doing what you're doing. You know, it seems like you're doing a lot of great work out here, healing people, you know, giving people their experiences and stuff like that. And also building generational, you know how they say generational wealth. This is like a generational thing with, you know, yeah. time, you know, you're going to be remembered by, you know. That's true. Um. So, yeah, it's like, it's almost like building a time capsule in your artwork as well. You know, it's like, this where you once was, this where you at now, and where you're moving towards, you know. So it's a story, it's definitely a story that needs to be heard and will be heard. So, Thanks. like I say, we appreciate you, Queen, coming on, giving your time to the platform. But before we get you out of here, last but not least, what does the word underdog mean to you, or when you hear the word underdog? <laughs> Let's see. Um, the word underdog mean to me is a starting point. It's just the starter point. You always want to be the underdog in every space that you're in because people don't expect much out of you, which leaves you room to be even greater than anybody could expect that you were ever were in the first place. That's real. Underdog is the big dog, you know? Let 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 the let the big dog take all the blame. Let the big dog take all the, the hits while you over here cruising up to the big top. Fat. Big yeah. fast, let them be the punching bag, and they don't even know I'm finna come up right behind them. Yeah, nah, I did that. You feel me? But like I say, most Dell Queen definitely appreciates you coming on, giving your time. You know, thank you. Hey, keep healing. You know, A Michelle is definitely already multinational, it's gonna be well known, you know, for years to come and years after that. Keep bringing your black excellence as a black woman as well, you know, in the industry and stuff like that. You know, this has to be done. We have to support our black queens out here. We with anything they doing, you know, it's all about uplifting each other. So we appreciate what you're doing for the culture. Thank you. Thank you so much. With that said, you know, we out of here. This is Lord Steve's in forever. Fourteen Hiller be here. Make sure y'all head over to anishellartistry.com. It's your whole fleet with JR. And we out of here. All right. Bye. Yeah. Gold mouth rabbit on my teeth. I got carrots. Open up a mouth and she got vocal sound like Janet. Marble on the floor is with the kitchen kind of granite. Lean color perk. You would think it's pomegranate. I see flying sauces from a roll another the planet. It will fall in place if it's meant to be organic. I got crazy lingo. You would think I'm speaking Spanish or something like a pie. Now with me without a cannon. I'm enlightened. Yeah, I got stones around my neck. Whoa. If you pay attention, I teach you how to earn respect. I walk around with a tag like I'm mad at the rail. People do any damn thing for a check. So what if you got sign labels, throw them on the shelf? No. I don't ask for hell, I just go within myself. Hard times I prevail, I bust up by myself. I let my nuts hang, cause they don't got no curfew. Go mouth, grab it on my teeth, I got carrots. Open up a mouth, cause she got vocal sound like Janet. Marble on the floors, but the kitchen kind of granite. Lean color perk, you would think it's pomegranate. I see flying sauces, then I roll another planet. Fall in place if it's meant to be organic. Blur like magic.
Magic. New 